Hello, Sim here. So before I crack on into detail about the NetDuma setup, I wanted to get into, well, ping, because it affects your gaming experience, uh, whether you're gaming solo, and more importantly, when you're gaming in a party. So I live in the UK, I've got an 18 millisecond ping. My packet loss is absolutely zero. Think about packet loss being like mail getting lost in the post, bad news. And jitter means, well, my ping is varying. So if I had a 10 millisecond jitter, my worst case ping is 28. So it'd be varying between 18 and 28. It'd be going all over the place, meaning that your gaming experience would be bad when it comes to Twitch shooters like Call of Duty. So if you had a high jitter, let's say you live in the UK, you do a pingtest.net in the UK and you get a jitter of, let's say, 30 milliseconds, I would say go and phone up your ISP because you should be having zero jitter, ideally. One or two, but if you're getting high numbers, consider phoning your ISP because if you play in a party and you get a high jitter, that's not going to be a good gaming experience. So moving on. Naturally, as you go out and you think about it, the geo filter for you guys are watching out, uh, you go to different countries, that ping is naturally going to increase, but sometimes the actual ping you get will surprise you. So Germany, 29 milliseconds, no problem. Denmark, 42 milliseconds. Italy, 47, fair enough. Norway, 50. Then we go to Ireland, that's just around the corner from me. I've got a 46 millisecond response, but a 8 millisecond jitter. Yes, I ran the test a few times and yeah, whether it's that particular server that ping test provides, I don't know, but it suggests that, well, basically my worst case scenario is 54 milliseconds for Ireland, uh, where I get better game experience playing with German gamers. Hmm, there you go. Food for thought. Moving on, 59 milliseconds for Spain, uh, in Barcelona, and then in Sofia, we have 79 milliseconds with a jitter of 45 milliseconds, taking us well over 100 milliseconds. Not good news. And with a 45 millisecond jitter, that is pretty damn high. Not good news. So, just sort of wanted to stress the importance of what ping means. And uh, it might be interesting for you guys to do your own ping test.net sort of testing so that you go, oh, actually, I, I want to exclude that area in my NetDuma setup. So now let's actually move on to how you can set up your home network with a NetDuma R1 gaming router. So the simplest way of doing it is via a modem. You just plug your NetDuma into the modem and plug everything else into your NetDuma. Simples. And the dash line represents Wi-Fi. So another way of doing it is that you have a modem router already and you just plug in your NetDuma into that modem router and you know you plug everything else into the NetDuma or you switch your modem router into a modem only mode if you've got that option and then still plug everything into the NetDuma. Quite simple. Then another way of doing stuff is that while well, I have a home router uh, I just unplug everything out of that, plug it into NetDuma, plug the NetDuma into my home router like so and hey presto, I'm good to go. Alternatively, uh, you can use your existing home router like a guest network, because effectively you have two networks. So let's say you've got you know, a friend who comes around, wants to use your Wi-Fi, you give them access to your home router Wi-Fi, which takes them straight out to the internet, but they can't see your home network, they can't see your PC, tablet or consoles. So you get the best of both worlds. And finally, there's SIM setup, which is really complicated, and you guys probably will not do this, but I guess some of you guys might be interested, so I thought I'd show it. So, where do you see the NetDuma R1 on this? Originally I had a switch, so I just had a cable that goes from my home router to a switch, and then it went to my consoles, hey presto. And I just swapped out the switch from my NetDuma R1. Now, because I have so effectively two routers, and I have two home networks, my consoles and my laptop are on one network, my PC and tablet are on the other. So if I need to go and do any tweaking on my NetDuma, I either have to plug a laptop physically into NetDuma or connect to it via Wi-Fi. So now let's actually go and move on into the setup. So what am I R1 router? And before I go through all of the settings and stuff that I've got in place, I want to jump over to my other router because I've got this R1 router plugged into my TP link. So what I've done via DHCP, an address reservation, is assigned my router, my gaming router, the static or reserved IP address of 192.168.0. 110. Now, if you're not familiar with this, your MAC addresses, which are alphanumeric codes, you click add new, type in its MAC address, type in the IP address, click save, and hey presto, you're 
done. And then you'll need to reboot your router because I get you'll get prompted to reboot it for its settings to take effect. Certainly on the TP link anyway. So what else is, a, is on? So NAT is enabled by default. You always want that enabled. I this particular router has a hardware NAT as well as a software, and those hardware and software work together, so they're both enabled. Go to forwarding, and of course I have UPnP enabled. So it does all the magic stuff. Uh, works beautifully then with uh, multiple consoles in the house. Unlike if you're using port forwarding, uh, I think you then have issues if you're doing that with multiple consoles in the house. Um, so therefore, you can see my router, my R1 router has got that dot ten. Um, as as I mentioned, I don't have port forwarding enabled or used. It's all done by UPnP. Now DMZ. You don't have to, but I've decided to put my R1 router into a DMZ. Again, determined by that uh, reserved IP address. Now, because I've got two routers connected to each other, that means I have effectively two home networks. One where all my game consoles are on, uh, and the other one for all my home PCs, tablets, and everything else um, that will chew up the internet. Now, if you're only plugging everything in and connecting everything to your... Um, NetDuma, then you won't need to pay attention to this next bit. Um, but those of you who've got TP links and don't want to do too much hassle, you know how to do your address reservation for all devices in your house. So I've got it enabled here. And what I've done is I've said that the PCs and tablets of interest, uh, which I've given them an IP address between this range, between the 110 to 120 here. Um, given a max upload speed of a meg and download speed of 6 meg, plenty for you know streaming movies and all that sort of jazz. Um, so it doesn't impact me. So this is the only rule enabled because of the tick box there. And then all the other traffic that goes to the NetDoomer just passes through the TP link and goes through to the NetDoomer. And NetDoomer does its magic stuff on its end because they've got specialist algorithms. So we flip back to the NetDoomer. Um, page for the host filtering and you can see that I have three consoles enabled here Xbox One, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4 I don't own, own an Xbox 360 but what you would do to add a device is you click on this um, for example PlayStation 4 next select the PlayStation Network done and hey presto or if it was an Xbox then you click Xbox Live and you can see that there's some um, PC type stuff supported things here too. So I'm going to cancel out of that. Now, when you want your uh, geo filtering to take effect, then you have you click on the enable button that enables it. Um, and so this one that says disable here, currently the PlayStation 3 is uh, up and running, so to speak, from a from a filtering perspective. But I'm sort of jumping ahead or going back to basics. I want to go to the settings stuff first, really. So I've got Wi-Fi. So here you go, you can have Wi-Fi. Uh, it's only 2.4 gigahertz. Maybe a future product will support the 5 gigahertz. You have to manually specify at this point in time the uh, channel that you want to use. Uh, security type, so I've selected this one. And then I've given it an SSID name of Dominate Lag. And you type in your password. Hey presto, no problem. Click apply. You've got Wi-Fi all sorted. Now, if any of you are thinking about using... Uh, so I, I don't think I have mentioned yet, but when you're using Wi-Fi and you see these four things, it doesn't mean that it just works via the four Ethernet ports. It does support Wi-Fi. I did a little testing on the PlayStation 3 a second ago, and it does work with that using Wi-Fi. So that's good news. It just means you have four gaming consoles slash gaming PCs or Macs or whatever that get supported a maximum, whether by Wi-Fi or wired Ethernet. So go back to Wi-Fi for a second. Now, as I mentioned, there's there's two networks. Now, if you decided that you wanted to try and use a feature known as uh, WDS bridging, what would happen here where you type in the like dominate lag, the MAC address, for example, uh, select that, type in the password, what would happen then? Anything wirelessly that connected to your uh, Netduma R1 would effectively connect to the TP link network and therefore would bypass the Netduma um, geo filtering completely because it's no longer on this one. So, for most people, it would be just easier to have everything connected in to your uh, Netduma for, for a hassle free experience. 
But I thought I'd let you guys know about that because I was experimenting. So port forwarding, I do not have on, as I mentioned. UPnP is the thing that does all the magic, so it's enabled. Just leave it on, and it does all the bits for you. Right, DHCP, pretty much I've left it alone. Uh, you can change this number up here if you want to, if you've only got the one network. Um, I've got two, as I said, because I've got my TP link, so I just leave this as 88, and hey presto, no issues whatsoever. Then, like I used to do in my TP link, I, I assign uh, reserved IP addresses against my three consoles. Well, and that generally guarantees me having an open NAT too. And once you've assigned those numbers, just click apply, and that's it. WAN. Now, if you are connecting this particular router directly up to a modem, this is the page you come in to go and type in all your credentials to get you to log in to your ISP. Um, so, for example, uh, this one up here, typically used by BT Infinity, type your username, I think it's the email address, blank password, whatever you need to type in. Um, some, some ISPs will just have you give you a static IP, so you have to go and type the one that is and type in all the details that they've told you. And this is, uh, you can change the, uh, the WAN MAC address as well if you need to, if you know, like cloning and stuff like that, which I haven't messed about with. And then you've got miscellaneous. So this WAN page, it also applies when you're using a modem router that you switch into modem only mode. So if you're only using the NetDuma R1 as your predominant and only um, gaming router, unless you've got another router plugged into this one if you wanted to. So going back to host filtering. Um, so I think I've already mentioned, but I can't remember because I've done a few recordings at the moment. So. Uh, you can if you click enable, it enables that device to be then active and working on the geo filter jazz down here. So at the moment, for example, you can see PlayStation 3 adding the device. I think I've already covered it. No problem. So I'm jumping around a bit. So what I want to go to for a second is device manager. So as you can see here, I've got 192.168.0.10. That's the IP address I've assigned my R1 router. And I've got my laptop, I've got my consoles completely switched off because I don't want any background noise at the moment whilst I'm recording this. So if I go to edit, here is where I specify my download speed and my upload speed. And that's the ones that I've done via speedtest.net. And then once you've entered those in, click update bandwidth, hey presto. Now here you can go into these boxes and actually type. So for example, the Xbox One, will won't necessarily come up as Xbox One, in that, in that sense, it will come up like Xbox OS, I don't know, 129 or something like that. Similarly, your PlayStation 4 will come up with something like that. So I've just gone into the box and typed in a more user-friendly name, uh, which comes into play when we go into the congestion control page, specifically for the device prioritization. Uh, it makes it more user-friendly here, and it also makes it more user-friendly when you're on this page and you're typing, you want to select stuff. For example, the PlayStation 3 came up as, I don't know, nameless or unnamed or something like that. And I could see what the MAC address was. I went to my PlayStation 3, could see what the MAC address was. Went, ah, it's PlayStation 3. Type PlayStation 3, and it makes it much more user-friendly when working with it on this router page here. So, I know I'm jumping about all over the place at the moment. So, congestion control. What we got? So we've got two different algorithms for this anti-flood, and the whole purpose of the anti-flood is to keep your ping low. And I told you about the importance of ping earlier before getting into this sort of like setup. So that's the reason I have on my TP link uh, throttled my other devices so they don't um, chew up all my bandwidth. And I believe that's the purpose of this too. Now, yes, you can drag and slide these back further to the left to you know throttle effectively. But what you can also do is use this device prioritization. So for example, let's say I want to give my Xbox 60% uh, of my remaining network that I've got available to it. Um, it will work absolutely beautifully, no problems, and I've done that. However, you'll see this share access button up here. So what that means is if nothing else is using it, my laptops are doing nothing, then it's still got full speed ahead internet access. However, if I untick my share access, 
and then I don't know, drop it down like this to three, it now will literally only get 3%. And the other ones will get 24%. So maybe, for example, on an old Call of Duty, because maybe I've got three consoles in the house and they're all gaming simultaneously. Um, so you wouldn't want to be mucking about with this download and upload cap. You'd want to then use this device prioritization. Maybe, for example, I'm using a really old COD and I need it to be like 2% deliberately because it, the matchmaking servers are terrible, for example. And it just makes the game more playable. But yeah, I want my PlayStation 4 to have more. I need to slide that back out a 2 bit or 3. And then what I do is click Update Distribution. Because if you don't click Update Distribution, the settings won't take effect. So if I click on Host Filtering just to change page, go back to Congestion Control, you'll see that it's taken effect. But I can reset, reset the distribution and then click Update just to ensure that those settings have taken effect. Hopefully I'm not confusing too much. So go back to this. I have that set up and I have this set up to 778 right now. And I can zoom in. Currently there's only two zoom levels, but uh, they're going to give more zoom levels later on. Now I've got this slightly over to the right because I want some of these that have lower ping and a bit less of France, which potentially has a higher ping. I definitely don't want it down here because that's got a, a very, very high ping and a very high jitter, which is no good to me. So, what else? All right, we've got this button that will be available to you guys. So when you're gaming late at night, you can click this button and it'll expand out to the next sort of like level of matchmaking uh, servers, you know, so you can make sure that you, you know, get a game or a lobby. And you can click, keep clicking and expand out uh, using those uh, whitelisted game servers or matchmaking servers, should I say. So that pretty much covers that. I haven't used this to allow and deny, but when you are in a game, you've got your in actually playing games, so let's say domination or team deathmatch, and you see a large server, you can click on it, and then you'll get a another box that sort of appears uh, hit between this bit and, and allow and deny, which you can then do ping to see if your host is just going all over the place, and then you can rate that host. So also with allow and deny, but so perhaps you've got a, a US buddy that you game with in Call of Duty, but you're in the UK, but you want them to game So if they have a static IP, once you know what that is, you can. Uh, click on their red circle having switched off this temporarily to get them into your game lobby and then sort of like give them a good rating and say allow them to you know be in so they're in the allow bit but I really haven't played about this allow and deny at this point in time so the host analysis page um, this gives you from a PC gaming world only a history of all that sort of host breakdown of what they were so you can sort of like rate them over time unfortunately when it comes to the console gaming world because the network packets are encrypted uh, due to the way Microsoft and Sony do their network stuff, um, this is not available in this particular page at this time and possibly won't be. But uh, it's not an issue. You can, um, when you're on the host filtering page, you, as I said, you'll see a big large circle. You can click on it and then see what the ping is. And if they're a good ping and you've got a good game, you can put them into the allow list or give them a rating of like 70%. And if you have a really bad a uh, host and it's terrible and the um, ping is going all over the place because you click the ping button and it's showing you it's just going all over the place and you can give it a bad rating of like, let's say 10% and therefore in future you won't be uh, in a lobby with that host or with that person hosting anyway. I think that pretty much covers it. And uh, if you've got any more comments or queries or questions, uh, for those of you who are interested about the VPN, I haven't used VPN, so if you were getting DDoSed and stuff all the time, you could use an appropriate VPN provider and do magic stuff. And here, if you were really interested, and because you had everything plugged into your NetDuma and nothing else, you can see what's chewing up your network. Um, yeah, so that pretty much uh, covers it, I think. So, if you have any comments or questions, uh, please feel free to go and drop them down below. If you start getting really technical and uh, nitty gritty, um, don't forget to also go and check out NetDuma's uh, own forum. And uh, as always, appreciate a thumbs up. And until next time, this has been Sim.